Good evening and welcome again to Evening Prayer. I would say it's lovely to see you, but of course it's only you who can see me. But it's wonderful to be connected together in this way. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 37 together. So if you have a Bible at home, you might want to uh, open that now. If you have a Bible app on your phone, then now would be a good time to turn to that. But let's begin uh, as we do each evening by deliberately setting aside this time and these minutes to God to come into his presence. I'm going to light a candle as a visible reminder of the light of God's presence with us in the darkness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts now by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do you ever despair at the evil and injustice that we see around us in the world? Have you ever felt angry at the cruel unfairness that it seems to be the good who suffer and wicked people seem to prosper and get away with stuff that people you know who have acted selfishly and wrongly uh, seem to live the high life whilst those who do the right thing have their lives seemingly cut short. Well, if you do, you're certainly not the only one. Is there an answer? Well, Psalm 37, a thoughtful, reflective song written by King David in his senior years, helps us, I think, to see an answer. That the unfairness of uh, our life as we see it between our birth and our death is not, in fact, the whole story. There is a, a bigger, more hopeful story behind and beyond what we see with our eyes in the world around us. And if we can live our lives in the perspective of that bigger story, then we need not fret or worry when the wicked seem to prosper. I remember <clears throat> uh, feeling a little bit melancholy about the state of, of the world a couple of months ago uh, when I came to read this psalm uh, in my daily readings. And um, I was looking back in my journal in preparation for this evening uh, at my, my journal entry for, for that day. And I'd made a note about uh, verse 24, which says, hope in the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. And I had written in my journal at the time these words. I realised that to be able to see something or someone else destroyed means that we must be left alive. A dead person cannot see. So not only is this comforting because it reminds me that everything will be all right in the end, that the kinks and injustices of this life will be straightened out by God. But it also reminds me that we do have an inheritance of eternal life, not because of anything we have done, but because of the grace of our wonderful Saviour, Jesus. I don't know if you've ever seen the, uh, the movie, The Best Exotic uh, Marigold Hotel, about a, a group of uh, retirees who travel to India to uh, see out their years of, of retirement. But there's a, there's a line in that film where the hotel, hotel owner says to one of the guests, everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, then it's not the end. 
way beyond the context uh, in the film, these words reflect a profound biblical truth. How the world is now, or even if it gets 10 times worse than how it is now with all the injustice that we see around us with the, the prosperity of, of, of the wicked, it will not be the last word. God will have the last word when Jesus returns as undisputed King and Lord. And when he does, it will be to make all things right. Because that's what God does. He makes things right. He rights wrongs and good will triumph over evil forever. And whether before or after our death, we will see it. Now, that's not to say that we shouldn't fight for justice now in this life. Of course, we should. But in, in doing that, we can have confidence that God will work everything out for good in the end. And in that, we need not worry or fret. I'm going to be quiet now and I'm going to let God speak uh, for himself through his words as we read Psalm 37 together. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, but if you have another one, translation, then you can just follow uh, in your own Bibles. Do not worry about the wicked. Don't envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like springtime flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence as clear as the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop your anger. Turn from your rage. Do not envy others. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed. But those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. In a little while, the wicked will disappear. Though you look for them, they will be gone. Those who are gentle and lowly will possess the land. They will live in prosperous security. The wicked plot against the godly. They snarl at them in defiance. But the Lord just laughs, for he sees their day of judgment coming. The wicked draw their swords and string their bows to kill the poor and the oppressed, to slaughter those who do right. But they will be stabbed through the heart with their own swords and their bows will be broken. It is better to be godly and have little than to be evil and possess much. For the strength of the wicked will be shattered, but the Lord takes care of the godly. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent and they will receive a reward that lasts forever. They will survive through hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies are like flowers in a field. They will disappear like smoke. The wicked borrow and never repay, but the godly are generous givers. Those blessed by the Lord will inherit the land, but those cursed by him will die. The steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will not fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. Once I was young, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly forsaken, nor seen their children begging for bread. The godly always give generous loans to others, and their children are a blessing. 
Turn from evil and do good, and you will live in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice, and he will never abandon the godly. He will keep them safe forever. But the children of the wicked will perish. The godly will inherit the land and will live there forever. The godly offer good counsel. They know what is right from wrong. They fill their hearts with God's law, so they will never slip from his path. Those who are evil spy on the godly, waiting for an excuse to kill them. But the Lord will not let the wicked succeed, or let the godly be condemned when they are brought before the judge. Don't be impatient for the Lord's to act. Travel steadily along his path. He will honour you, giving you the land. You will see the wicked destroyed. I myself have seen it happen. Proud and evil people thriving like mighty trees. But when I looked again, they were gone. Though I searched for them, I could not find them. Look at those who are honest and good, for a wonderful future lies before those who love peace. But the wicked will be destroyed. They have no future. The Lord saves the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them and they find shelter in him. Father, thank you that in you we can know that everything will be all right in the end. And if it's not all right in the world around us, then it isn't the end. Thank you that in you and through Jesus Christ, we have a sure and certain hope. Thank you, Lord, that we do not need to fret or worry when the evil prosper. Thank you, Lord God, that you hold our times in your hand. We pray for those who cry out for justice in these days, who long for wrongs to be righted in their lives. Give them patient hope. Help them, Lord, to look to you, even as they work for justice and work for the truth and work for right. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Or as Jesus puts it, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So Father, we seek you as the giver rather than seeking the gift. And we pray that in doing so, Lord, we will indeed uh, receive the desires of our heart and know the joy and peace of your hope and salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.